everyone. Welcome to Life and Style with Francine Walker. I'm your host, Francine Walker, and joining me today is Raquel Robinson, also known as Mama Hustle Coach. Hi, Raquel. Hello, Francine. Thank you for joining me today. Um, first of all, I have to thank you because this all came about. Let me tell you the story. I have been endeavoring to do this show probably for about a year. And we decided to go for a walk Friday. Mm -hmm. And we're going around this really beautiful, um, I think it's called Carpenter Lake Reserve. And we're just talking and we're just, we're just really um, strategizing, brainstorming. And we're like, wait a minute, what are we doing? Let's stop procrastinating. And we were just like, we have so much content and so many things to offer why aren't we doing that and it's like yeah why aren't we doing that <laughs> and we didn't know and it was like we had no real reason why so she challenged me and um she said we're gonna have something done by monday i said okay and you're gonna be my first guest and she's my first guest so i'm excited um because you know what, you have to really choose to just get started with what you have because you really do have everything inside of you right. to do what you need to do. God has equipped you that way. And I'm not gonna get preachy, because I'm not preachy, but I do know and I do love God, so, um, and she does too. I so do. yes, this is really, uh, we met through Facebook, so, uh, and I just love my Facebook because I have connected with some phenomenal women and I'm just fortunate because they're in my circle and they feed me and they encourage me. So, with, uh, yeah, see? Yeah. So without further ado, we're gonna get started. So, okay, so tell me Raquel, how did you get started coaching? And why do you call yourself the Mama Hustle Coach? Got it. Um, I started coaching um, or was introduced to the concept of coaching around 2005. My okay. husband and I were thinking about our legacy and um, entrepreneurship and what type of business we could get into. Um, and then one morning I came downstairs about 4.30 in the morning and he was already up and he said, I think I know what, what kind of business we should do. And I, I thought, what, what? And he said, coaching. And I had no idea mm -hmm. what coaching was and what it was about. He says, you know, we're the kind of people that when we're in a room with folks, folks always pull us to the side to help them think through some things. He said, I think you should do some research um, in terms of coaching and look at the training. And so the business that we started up ended up being what I... Right. <laughs> what he started I, it and right, he's, he's like, like I'm a finisher. He's like, I'm the visionary. Now you go make this happen. Right. And so once Which I is got, good, though. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so I, I looked into what coaching is and started doing the coach training. And really, the coaching is simply a tool. Mm -hmm. So my main core gifts, even as a leader in nonprofit, as a nonprofit executive and a higher ed executive, has been exhortation mm -hmm. and encouraging people and helping them see the path for themselves right. that they need to take. So and important. So, and so coaching is one of those tools that helps me to exhort other people. Sure. So the tools that I use um, in my business are speaking, writing, and coaching. Okay. Um, and so I've just become really passionate about that, helping people make that transition from where they are now to where they would like to be. So our coaching practice is Making a Change, LLC, okay. because we're actively helping people make significant and purposeful change. Okay. Um, and then you're, to answer your question about how I began to connect with managing the Mama Hustle, um, I was working with my own coach, Kelly Jones, and I was in a transition myself going from full-time employment to this thought and concept of entrepreneurship, but kind of still managing my own kids mm -hmm. um, that were small at the time. And I was just in a really hard place in terms of that whole thought process that mm -hmm. we attach ourselves to what we do. And I was in between doing. Sure. And so she asked, Kelly challenged me and asked me a question. She said, well, if nothing changes, then what will you do? And wow. I said, well, I'll just manage my mama hustle. Ha! And she was like, well, what is that? What does that mean? Yeah. And so we kind of 
just talk through that and 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 managing my own space and my sure. own life that's really how managing the mama hustle came about for me yeah and realizing that it wasn't just me that there were lots of women out there sure. who are trying to manage the complexities of womanhood the mama Ooh, hustle isn't just about having kids because e we're all mothering whether yes. we have biological children or not yes we are helping people we are nurturing we are leading we are directing we are correcting mm -hmm. um, and how do you manage the complexities of womanhood with our own personal ambition sure. but then our own personal responsibilities yeah that can include motherhood or taking care of aging parents or um, mm. starting a new business in addition to working full-time mm -hmm. or life after retirement or life after some other kind of life change yeah. having a child or uh, losing a child or divorce or remarry all of those and things. you know what all those various stages they require encouragement, mm -hmm. exhortation, reminders. You know, like this is a moment. I remembered when I was caring for my aging mother, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I kept myself surrounded by people who were encouraging, but right. I was also working on my master's at the time. Mm -hmm. That was my thing to right. keep me sane and and kind of like whole i guess right um, and uh, having a strategy for working through that yeah, process yeah. so you know in terms of coaching it is that exhortation which is my my gift but it is creating that strategy and yes. that plan and then having a path of accountability yes to be able to manage all those things but yet meet your strategic goals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow how does and i guess you may have answered it but I want to kind of delve a little bit more into it because I think sometimes we look at coaching as a luxury and not a necessity. Mm. And so how does working with a coach support a productive and healthy lifestyle? Sure. A coach can be a very valuable member of your team if you... Um, activate and use your coach properly. So mm -hmm. when people engage in coaching with me before our first session, I usually send them uh, something via email that says 10 steps to get the most out of coaching. Okay. Right? Because there are some people say, well, coaching doesn't work, or I worked with a coach and it didn't help me, and usually they didn't work. <laughs> you know, just to be hey, Yeah, just it's kind of like with a personal trainer. I mean, exactly. if you don't show up, and if the only days you train are the days you see your personal trainer, then you're not going to get yeah. the results that you want. Yeah. So working with a coach, like I said, helps. As a coach, you stand, I stand outside the situation sure. and the circumstances and provide some objectivity um, and help people find some clarity and mm -hmm. even show them themselves. Well, this sure. is what you say. But this is what I see. Yeah. Um, and having that objective voice of someone who is not doing the work for you, yeah. but is walking alongside you in that process is really helpful. Um, and, and coaching, I always just make the distinction that it's really different from some of the other professions and other kinds of relationships. Mm -hmm. So I am also a consultant. And I provide nonprofit consulting in terms of planning and development, strategic planning. Um, I also provide some executive transitional leadership. So I recently finished a contract serving as the interim executive director wow. for a nonprofit organization. And I and let me stop. This girl is the bomb. Talk about your background. I mean, you have like, like my niece says, Titi, I tell everybody you have a, a, a lot of degrees. It's like, no, you have a lot of degrees. <laughs> no, I only have three degrees. So not a lot of degrees. But I have a bachelor's degree in communication from Indiana University. And I have a master's degree in mm -hmm. organizational communication from Purdue University. And then I have a master's of education in instructional technology and human performance improvement and training. Okay. So which really goes well all, with the coaching, yeah. the curriculum development, the um, and, and really that whole gap in performance, that mm -hmm. uh, performance improvement is, has really been helpful um, as a coach. And I've trained over 100 hours with the Coaches Training Institute okay. um, out of California in terms of my coaching. Okay. But coaching is different 
when I'm operating as a coach, it's different from a, being a consultant. So sure. as a consultant, we agree upon a scope of work. I come in and I do that work. And then when that scope of work is complete, I go away. Right. Um, a therapist helps individuals look at things that have happened to them in their past that may be keeping them from living their lives right now. Mm. Right. And then as a coach, I help people look at where you are today and where you ideally would like to be, evaluate the gap between the two, sure. and then establish a plan to move the ideal closer to the reality. That was my next question. Did you peek? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, it's like, because I think sometimes we get confused mm -hmm. and because we don't know. Right. Um, I don't need a coach, that's therapy. It's like, mm, they're, no. they're so different. And you may need both. Yeah. I have worked with clients yeah. who are actively engaged with a therapist sure, and then are working with me as a coach. And so I kind of um, kind of collaborate, get an overview of what's mm -hmm. going on in therapy. But I am very clear about um, what my qualifications yeah. and credentials are. Yep. And there have been, and, and sometimes in an introductory session with a client, I may suggest to them that they work with their therapist or a therapist sure. for some time before coming uh, to me because I'm not the right professional to help them Understood. at that time. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so what do you think some of the challenges people face in managing their lives? I mean, because it can all be more overwhelming as we wear so many hats right. and you it's almost like you need a little compartment mm -hmm. for each one. It's like, okay. Done, done. You know what I mean? Right. But sometimes you just need somebody to help you organize that. Right. And so as a coach, I work with people. Uh, one of the first things I usually do is have people do an assessment of the seven major areas of their lives and give mm -hmm. themselves a rating from zero to ten sure. in terms of their, sa their satisfaction in those. Um, and that can usually help us determine a place to start. One of the challenges I see is sometimes we make the wrong thing the main thing. Yeah. And we start um, with, oh, let's just say, um, I need to clean my house, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, and my house is just so unorganized and mm -hmm. I really need to clean my house, or I really need to do this, and if I could just get that done, it'd be so much better. And maybe the clean house isn't the root, yeah. Maybe it's the overspending or some sure. other thing that, that creates so much clutter, right? right? And right. so if we begin to deal with that mm -hmm. and the, what you're bringing into your house that makes it so cluttered, mm -hmm. then we can begin to look at the organization. Right. Um, you know, right. I've had people say, well, I spend so much money and I can't get my budget under control. And so, but the money may not be the issue. It may be being disorganized, which yes. causes you to have to rebuy things. Yeah, because you can't find them. Because you can't find them. So that's one of the initial challenges I see, that people present in coaching with one thing, and then after we begin to get engaged in some conversation, it's like, mm -hmm. mm, maybe that's not mm -hmm. where we need to spend our time. Maybe yeah. if we spent our time over here, it's almost like low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. What can we do over here that may be low investment but high yield yep. that will give us some momentum in this other thing, sure. right? If I stop bringing stuff into the house, then I can get some momentum in terms of getting the house clean. As a life coach, how do you personally manage yourself? Wow. That's a great question, Francie. <laughs> I got good questions. Well, I, I try to, <laughs> to emulate and live um, the things that I work with my clients on. And one of the things that I really advocate is having a great team. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually on someone else's team, sure. their success team. That's usually okay. what I, I encourage people to, um, to develop. And those folks can be related to you. They can be a boss. They can be your mentor. Mm -hmm. um, it may be how you engage your significant other in mm -hmm. terms of accomplishing the things that you need to do. And so I think that is one of... Uh, the things that really helps me manage my own hustle is sure. having a great team. Uh, my husband is a great partner, and mm -hmm. we have a, a sure partnership. Is. Ooh, in terms she locked up, baby. <laughs> I was oh, you know, been there. Yes, it she was be, blessed. It will be 23 years, oh, wow. um, October 6th. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. You have an anniversary we coming do up. Have How important is it for someone to consider life coaching 
and we've already talked about why it's different from a therapist mm -hmm. and why you definitely can use both. I mean, because I think therapy is, is vogue. I mean, it has helped me in different phases of my life when after I had my son and after I lost my mom. So, if you, you know, if we could just say that again, because we are in a culture yes. where mental health care is um, has a stigma attached yes. to it. Yes. Um, yes. That She's right. Is, is not always accessible mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. and that there is some level of shame or embarrassment attached to that. And I just want us to say yeah. that taking care of yourself and your mental health is right. so extremely important. Um, sure. And the one of the objections I hear from church folk is, well, I need to find a Christian coach, I mean a Christian um, therapist, and how do I do that? If you have medical care or your job will provide for you mm -hmm. to see a therapist, yep. then you need to go to that therapist and take Jesus with you. Right, and so it's not as yeah. important that the therapist a, yes. has a faith life. It's important that you have one, mm -hmm. and you take that to that experience with mm -hmm. you. So I, I just wanted to. to I I agree. I mean, I you know, as a Christian, I don't require everyone have Christian in their title. Right. I mean, if that's the case, you and couldn't eat anywhere. You could not. Unless it was a Christian you know, you, can you, wear you couldn't Christian go to the doctor. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't go to school. <laughs> you know, we, did, we couldn't fly. I mean, we so, do and, and that's not, please, because someone And we're not it. making light. It's right. not, it's, I'm not making light, and I'm certainly not denouncing faith, but I am advocating practicality. Yes. And the practicality is, I know for me, God will lead me. How about that? God right. will lead me. It's like, hmm. Because you may have to go to a couple of therapists, and I don't know this is, but this is important too, right. that she's talking about this. Um, it doesn't take away from the life coaching, but it can be a, another component. Because sometimes you can't even get to where you need to go right. if you have these blocks. You're not going if to we're even still focused on the past, it's very difficult to try to go to the future. Absolutely. You know, you need to go from the past to, to the present. Yes, right? yes. And a therapist can help you yes. in that day-to-day, -day, how do I live in these moments? Yes. Um, despite what has happened in the past or what is currently happening to me right now. Yeah. If someone is interested um, in you helping them manage their life, help them get to where they need to go, close the gap, as you mm -hmm, talked mm -hmm. about. How can they get in touch with you? Sure. Um, you can reach out to me on my website at RaquelRRobinson.com, R-A-Q-U-E-L-R-R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. Or you okay. can give me a call at 313-300-5079. Okay, so Raquel R. Robinson. Yes, people dot forget that. Com. Yes. So it's R. A. Robinson. Right. So Raquel R. R. Robinson.com. Robinson. Mm -hmm. And your phone number again? 313 300. Um, how did I forget my number? 313 300 5079. It's like I just had a blank. I was like, Francine, what's my number? Wait a minute, let me get my phone. Oh, it's like I can't get my phone. I don't know. Okay, so thank you so much. Oh my God. I think we, 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 we got some great, we covered some great ground here. Um, if you, you've got our contact information, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe on my YouTube channel. This is where the show will be found um, for future reference again, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.